Now it's time to fetch one product because now we are getting all, we don't want it. Let's say if I pass an ID one, we want that. In this case, how will you do it? It should be simple, right? Let me create a new function. And this time I will say, get product by ID. Okay, so it should accept an ID and based on that, it will it, it should return the product. Now at this point, I'm just going to pass a variable here. Let's say ID and this will be of type int. This is the variable I'm going to work with and based on the ID it should return. And of course there should be a mapping as well. So let's say at app dot get and then you have to specify the URL. And of course that should be product or maybe you can say products, but let's say product slash. Uh, now, so let's say if you simply say product and by default, I'm assuming the ID is one, how will you do it? So one of the easy ways, if you know that the ID will be always in sequence and there's no missing point, uh, you can simply say, uh, you can use the feature of list where you can fetch a particular element based on the ID, something like this. I can say return a product and then I can specify, let's say, if I'm assuming that's a first element, I can simply return by zero. That should work, right? And let's say we are not even using that. So we can remove this till this point and at this point and let's work with it. And now let me hit this URL product, not from the swagger, but from here, localhost colon 8,000 slash product, not products, product, enter. And it, this is returning the first product. Okay, that's cool. But every time it will return the first product. And the second problem is, what if you want to fetch the product ID two and two itself is a first product, then this will work and um, this will not work. That means uh, because it will always return zero. And even if you say one, what's the guarantee that the second product has the ID two? No guarantee, right? Even if you want to fetch the ID with two. In that case, you have to pass two, okay? So what you will do is you will map it with two so that you will get two. And now I can just say one because that's, that is two. Okay, now that's the problem, right? I got two here and I want to use that two here. How will I use this two here? That's that's crazy. Now we can, what we can do is we can hard code. So for two, it should return uh, with ID two. We can do some coding for that. And for three, we should do, do some coding for that. And for four, we should do some coding for that. Uh, what if you have hundred products? You have to get hundred methods. That means we have to make this two dynamic. In this case, if you want to make it dynamic, just put that in curly brackets and use a variable name. Let's say ID. So you can say product slash ID, but don't mention ID, mention the number. And that number will come here because this is a dynamic path. And you can use that path here. So you can say ID type int. So whatever name you are going to use here, use the same name and you're okay. And now I can use this ID. So I can simply say ID minus one. That should work, right? Let's try. So go back here and now product slash, if you say one, you will get the first product. If you say two, you got the second product and I will also do pretty five here. And if I say four, you will get fourth product. But if you say six, it will say internal server error and there will be error here as well. So because we are going out of list, okay? And that's where you have to handle the exceptions. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just want to make it simple. Uh, this is working, but then the problem is what if you don't have a product like this? Maybe you have product five and six here, but still it, this will not work. So even if you say six, enter, it will say internal sub error because here we are sending the request six minus one, which is five, and we don't have the sixth element. Okay, this is not the right logic. So let me just write the right, let me just write the correct logic here. So we have to search the products for the ID. So I'm just going to iterate product in products. And then here I'll check if the ID provided by the product or one of the product, if that ID matches with this ID, in that case, return the product. If it is matching, return the product. Otherwise you can return product not found. Okay, uh, that should work, but there is an error here. There should be double equal to, no problem now, cool. Let me go back here and now let's fetch for six. It is working, perfect. If you search for four, there's no product as four. So it says product not found. Just to verify, there's no ID four here. Okay, and what if you want to do it for two? It is working. So this is how you fetch a single product. Okay, that's the logic. Okay, so that's for fetching all the records, one record. But now what if you want to add a record? So maybe we have four, I want to add more. 
in that case, what you will do is, uh, let's create a function, and this will be add product. And now you can guess. I don't have to tell you now. Uh, you guessed it right. We have to say app dot. Now we can't use get because we are submitting data. We are creating a resource. In that case, you have to say post. And then the URL. The URL will be the same as previous, which is product. We don't have to modify that. How will you differentiate between a single product or this, this slash and this one is because of the get and post. Now, how will you add a product? So we have our in-memory list here. I can simply say the products in this I want to add. So product dot, we have a method called append in list. We can use that and we can append it with, oh, we can append it with what? We are sending data from there. We have to also accept that data here. Now, in which format you will get the data? You will get the data in the format of product itself. So you will get the product of type product. So just get that and add it here, okay? So what we're doing here is we are creating a method called add a product of type post. So you can see we have, we have, this, we have this URL which is product. And then from the client side, you have to send the product details. That will go here and then you are appending. But the question is, how will you send this data? Okay, so let me just save this. So now we have to also return, also return product, whatever we are getting, just return that. Okay, but how will you make this work? This is this should be a bit tricky. Let's try. First of all, we can't do that from the browser directly. We need a React application or I can use Swagger because for post you need a form. Okay, we don't have a form here. But Swagger says, don't worry, I will take care of it. Just refresh the Swagger. Now, I don't want to greet. I just want all the products. I will just keep it open. Uh, and I will keep open the add product, okay? In fact, we have, okay, let's just test add product. And if you expand add product, it will give you some details. The, of course, you can click on try it out, but it will give you a schema, okay, default schema, where you can add the elements or add the values. And let's see, so I will just click on try it out and you can edit these values now. So let's say this is eight, and I'm going to add a new product. Let's say watch from, I will say Titan watch. And the price is, let's say, $80. And the quantity we have is, let's say, 50 because we have it. Okay. So this is the data which we have to add. And this has to be in a JSON format. So when you click on execute, this data goes to the server. And you can see this is the request it is sending using curl behind the scene. And the URL, okay, so there is some problem. It is sending request for product. Oh, I forgot to add a slash here, one slash, and this is what happens. Okay, uh, let me just copy this so that I don't, I don't have to type it again. Uh, execute, so do I need to refresh this? Add product, we'll say try it out, paste, execute, and yeah, this time it worked. You can see there's no error. This is the URL, and you got the data here, and this is 200. But how do we check if this get, got added to the list? Let's go up, let's see all the products, try it out, execute. This is what we have done hard-coded, and this is the new data. Okay, things are working out. So this is how you fetch all the record, this is how you fetch one record, and this is how you work with uh, posting the new record. Oh, this is working. Now it's time for the next two methods, which is put and delete, which we'll see in the next video.